What if I told you that there's a device out there that can replace your expensive Ziconic light meter and your C800 spectral meter for less than $400? Did a color just release a light color meter? And after testing for the last couple of weeks, I have many thoughts. Let's find out if the new light color is really a Ziconic killer. If you're a photographer or a filmmaker, you know how important it is to get your lighting and your colors, right? Light and color accuracy aren't just really nice to haves, they're pretty much everything. Miss your exposure? Well, your shadows turn to mud. Get the white balance wrong? Well, your clan skin might look like a zombie or something, or something akin to a Teletubby. <laughs> and right now, getting pro-level readings for your tools means dropping more than $2,000 on two separate meters or gambling with guesswork. You do whatever you like. Yeah, you do whatever you like. We can't condone anything of the sort. No, we can't. Live! Live! The new Data Carter Light Color Meter claims to solve both problems in one $399 tool. If that works, it's really an industry-changing device. If it doesn't, well, let's just say that Sikani can keep us charging with their very, very premium prices. But here's the thing. That kind of tech is hard to get right. Companies I've tried and failed in the past. Do you remember the Lumu Power? I reviewed it in this channel a couple of years ago, and while it had tons of potential and I loved using it, the company that actually started it didn't survive. Rest in peace. So can the data color succeed where others have struggled? Let's find out. I received a very early copy, hint there's a bit of foreshadowing here, of the light color meter from the marketing team at Data Color. If I have to summarize this review, it's complicated. But here are some important disclosures before we start. I did receive the product for free for testing and reviewing. I was not paid to do this review, and Data Color is seeing the video for the first time just like you. So no money has been exchanged from either parties for this review. When opening the box, you get a manual, two AA batteries, two magnetic clips, one for finger holding, have kind of easy operating, and another one is a sort of clip you can attach to a shirt or to an object that has fabric. The light color also comes with a hard shell case, and of course the unit. I just want to say kudos to the AA batteries for this device because it'll never create a solution that will need a complete replacement in a few years because of a dead battery. Basically, it can last forever until the components inside can actually work properly. And like I said earlier, I spent a couple of weeks using the unit for various tasks and various jobs that I have, and I didn't notice any battery drain at all. Additionally, you can customize the device auto shutdown, all that fun stuff, all those power settings inside of the app for your preference. The reader comes with incident and reflective reader for more precise reading, which is really operatable at just pressing that button here. The light color is a screenless device, as you may have noticed, and that powers on by a little button located on the bottom here. It has LED lights to indicate its current status, and also it's really smart, but the uh, data color has a one quarter thread which means you can actually attach it from the bottom so you can get constant readings if ever you want to monitor a current set, uh, if ever you're doing light changes, but more on that later. So the reader itself does not have a classic PC SYNC cord, but it does have a 3.5 millimeter jack. You can plug in your SYNC cord if ever your trigger still has one instead of using the 3.5. The range of light color meter, as you can see on screen, goes up to 512,000 ISO, 90 aperture, which is very deep, and a shutter speed of 1 over 1, 1 over 1 to there. Let's redo this. And a shutter speed of a maximum 1 over 16 thousandths of a second. 16 thousandths of a second. I said it right. For the video shutter angle, the limit is 358, which is almost 360. Since this device is screenless, that means, of course, an app. Let's talk about it. So the light color app is Android and iOS compatible and connects over Bluetooth 4.0. I did this review using a Samsung S24 Plus, which is of course Android. So when I first opened the app, uh, it was quite an experience. I had issues with the notification system where it went absolutely wild and caused the app to crash because uh, if you don't open it or if you don't turn on notifications, uh, the app didn't work. Fun. After a bit of tinkering, the app worked great. When I was doing my initial test, the device sent the data very quickly over Bluetooth 4.0 to my phone, allowing me to write down only any adjustments that I made without having to click anything. That was during my testing when I was testing either flash or LED lighting, which we'll talk about later. The application offers a couple of modes for photographers and video people, such as photo for flash, of course, ambient light, and video for lighting and ambient, a simple color for a quick color reference, color balance, color graph, and chromaticity for more advanced color measuring functions. When the unit is actually reading something, the device responds by showing you an LED status that basically takes, it says, I read a measurement. 
And with those measurements in mind, let's talk about their accuracy, which is very important and also a bit complicated. These tests were initially conducted March 3rd, 2025, and within that week, with the version 1.00 of the app, which is basically the first version that ever existed. And I think the best way to measure the accuracy is to compare this reader against another reader, which is the Siconic L478. So the light color readings are consistently rounded up to whole stops, so there's like no 0.1 EV precision compared to my Siconic L478. In standard flash tests, I'm using here the newer Q2 uh, at 1 over 200, which is natural sync measurements aligned within expected margins. But when testing for HSS, this revealed like a little more variance than I would like. At 1 over 200 of a second, some Siconic matches were really spot on considering they're rounding up. And at 250th of a second though, or HSS for most cameras, it really diverged significantly. The issue was communicated to the color and along the bugs that I faced using the app. But in terms of good news, the light color outperformed in low light sensitivity, capturing flashes between f1.3, but the Siconic absolutely failed, it couldn't read anything. And ranges between both devices differ too. The Siconic measures between f1.0 and 161.2 versus the data color at f0.5, over at 144, which is significant in both. So the LED testing show a reliable cinema consistency uh, within the 180 shutter angle. Though a lack of dedicated HD mode forces workaround. Basically, I couldn't test it. And the reason why I couldn't test it because the data color does not offer an HD mode option. So for simple, uh, very simple HD camera readings, it can't do that. But in good news, the color accuracy held up against the XY grays, except for a persistent slight green shift that the data color perceives in flash tests. So this device is particular, right? With this Illuminati shape. Spooky. Do you think I'm spooky? And after field testing, here's the economic truth. This meter turns photographers into octopuses. Let's just do an example. You need a flash reading? Enjoy the circus, okay? So you have to hold the meter, fire your transmitter, which is, Jesus here, then take your phone and take a reading, rinse and repeat until you get it right. If you ain't got time for that, either you can grow a third arm, you're welcome to show me how, or use a one quarter thread that is located at the bottom and it's really a lightsaber. Another solution is to have your camera strap or a 3.5 millimeter PC sync cord if ever your trigger still has one. Mine doesn't. But cinematographers or multi-step photographers really weighing big though. Since this device is actually compatible, you can actually dump many into the app. You can have multiple of these around a set and actually meter everything you want to precisely. But if you're a solo flash shooter, you don't have any assistance, I really pray you don't drop any of this anytime soon. And those LED status that you can actually see on screen, I have a hard time with it. You just enroll into like color reading 101. Seven colors to memorize mid-shoot, to me, it's a hard pass. Just give me a screen or make it more simple next time. For the future, maybe. Is the data color light color meter a true Siconic killer? So with the caveat that you're not shooting at HSS, the light meter is actually pretty solid if you really put aside the inconsistencies of HSS. The color features on this are legitimately useful. I've used this in many sets and just wanted to get a color reading of the white balance and it's pretty accurate. It actually agreed with my camera. The multimeter support is a huge win for cinematographers or if you have a big set of uh, photo flashes everywhere, you can actually measure everything at once and it's pretty cool. But the app headaches, the lack of a screen, the HSS quirks means it's not quite a flawless victory yet. But let's be straightforward here. This light color is a rebrand of the Illuminati. That makes me wonder if the Illuminati itself had the same issues that the I'm seeing the light color has. I've related some of my feedback comments to the color and they're currently working on fixing all the bugs and issues that I found. So that brings me back to the original question. Is this really a good value deal? So when I compare the light color against other light meters, there's a few things I like to see via, via an update that's really simple. Just push the update and then you're done. First, polish the app. While the UI is completely functional, it actually works, it doesn't look great. It feels clunky and outdated and I mean, there's like, uh, it feels like more of an engineering project than uh, someone with a UI experience uh, going through it and making it really friendly. And I'm thinking here about the option menu, which is really confusing and the language not being very straightforward. 
Second, make the device connect automatically when you turn it on. Because right now, instead of like having this open and it connects automatically to your phone or to your device, you have to go in the app every single time and press connect, which feels like a really unnecessary step that could easily be fixed by changing the either the connection protocol instead of the data color, light color, or instead of the app. Third, add an HD version for video mode. That's it, just add a HD version for a simple, quick reading of a video mode. It would make my life really simple. Now we're entering like really advanced features, but bear with me. The Seconic C800 has a full list of CRI composition and or uh, I would call it, it's called R values, which reflects every single color on the spectral meter. And that makes it very, very useful to understand the quality of your sources of light and how basically they project your colors. While the color balance mode is interesting and the chromaticity is a more advanced feature, I would love to see this uh, inside of this. And I think, I think it can be done using this device. In addition, add CRI or TLCI to make this actually even more professional. And now that we've completed what I'd like to see in an app update, if ever, ever there's a version two that would come out in the next few years, here's what I would do. Add a better quality of life by redesigning some elements of the device. An example, by adding a simple USB port that basically goes both ways, you can connect the light color with a phone and make it much more handheld friendly. Because basically you could connect this, again, this is not an iPhone, but you get what I mean, and this to this, and this will be held directly by the device or by the phone, so that I can make it one device instead of having three things going on in my hands. And here I'm referencing the defunct Lumu Power, which worked that way and it made it really easy that the device didn't need a screen, but it actually be held very friendly in a very friendly manner, having just basically your phone connected with a device and then click, I can have in my reading and be done. Since now even iPhones now on the USB-C team, that makes the connector uh, available both to Android and iOS really, really friendly. Okay, like a second ago, I offered a solution to not have a screen, but Actually, please add one. I know, the $399 value is a great value for what you get with the light color. And I'll say it, it's potentially gonna slow down the C800 spectrometer cells by a lot and even the L478 and everything within that range. But adding a screen, I know it makes it a little more expensive in terms of manufacturing and it changes the price between like a $400, which is very affordable to maybe $500 but I don't think anyone would mind spending an additional 100 bucks on the convenience on not having to play a juggle with this device. While I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, the Lit Duo looks like a very interesting alternative to that if ever you wanna have this device uh, basically handheld. Uh, it looks like a pretty much the same thing. So I'll be on the lookout for the Lit Duo. Lit Duo, if you see this, please get in touch. So just to summarize what I said in the previous sections, would I buy this with my own money? compared to the C800 and the L478. Yes, I would, because the ROI is just insanely good on the light color, if ever they fix all the bugs that I mentioned before. The reason why is because, let's say you're an early cinematographer or early photographer, and you need a device that does, does both pretty well. I mean, the light color is getting there. It's gonna take a bit of time with the updates. I hope it's gonna get fixed soon, but the ROI is just that much higher versus spending $22,000 or $2,500 and more on the L478 plus the AC800. So if you're on a budget and you need both a light and a color reader in one tool, this might be your best options at this price. But if you demand absolute precision, you might still wanna save up for that Seconic combo and links are below for all three devices so you can check them out for yourself. And these are of course affiliate links. But the question is, what do you think? Would you trust the light color on a page shoot or a important assignment? Let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed that you want to know about and maybe you can do an update. And if you find this review helpful, make sure you click that like button, uh, share this video with your lighting nerd friends, and make sure to hit subscribe so you can stay in tune for the next reviews, BTS, tutorials, etc. etc. By doing all this, it really helps the channel. And again, I want to thank Data Color and the marketing team for things sending the light color for a review. And if there's a big update that, I, that you need to be aware of, I'll make a quick one for YouTube, so make sure you stay tuned. Until next time, go make something awesome. This has been Evans B, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.